Yeah, my name is Sarah. Um, I come from the region here. I live in the region of Karlsruhe. Um, I work with lasers in my, in my work, and I develop things like this. This is an industrial laser system for, for marking pieces of metal, pieces of plastic in a, in a line where products go through. Um, in my free time, as she mentioned, I am in the Fab Lab Karlsruhe, where we developed or built the Laser Sour, which is an open source project. And um, so I have two laser sites, one at work and one, one in my free time. And um, so I did an experiment with the CO2 laser in the Fab Lab. I wanted to know what happens when the beam goes on the skin. And the result, so I went to a butcher and, and bought uh, a piece of pig skins, five, six millimeters thick. And I put it on the laser and switched on the, the fume extraction and said, okay, don't know where to start. And um, this I come to later. So, and I ended up with this. Um, on the top, um, you see 10% input power. Um, at 1,000 millimeters minute um, writing speed. Second line on the, on the top left is 50% uh, of, of power, and the third is 100%. When you look closely, you can see that the, the O's and, and zeros, the, the meat, the, the skin, was lasered out and fell down. So then I was scared. I was really scared. It smelled like hell. I was close to vomiting. And I thought, whoa, um, didn't expect this. And the second, uh, on the left-hand side, the three rows um, were with uh, 8,000 millimeters minute uh, marking speed. I don't want to have this on my skin or in my eyes. Definitely not. This. I can't describe, I can't imagine the pain and the consequences, the medical consequences. So therefore, um, you are responsible for what you do with lasers. You, everyone is personally responsible to wear the safety goggles, to take care that no beam goes, goes out of the compartment. Um, so whenever you hurt yourself, don't take me reliable for it. So, oh, Sarah didn't warn me about this and that. So, no, absolutely not. You are responsible. So read the standards. Read more. Read some other literature. Think about what you're going to do. Seriously, think about what you're going to do. It is so dangerous, or can be dangerous, and um, yeah, obviously, before you switch on the laser system, please switch on your brain. This is vital. This is really important. So, um, by the way, this was done with a CO2 laser at 10,600 nanometers. And I don't know the output, the optical output power, but the input power was maximum 100 watt. So, I guess 60, 70 watt uh, output power optical. Um, not nice. Um, I came across some, on, on, on preparation to this talk, I came across some, some nice pictures um, and some nice stories I want to share. Um, especially what is very vulnerable is the eyes, obviously. Um, skin you can repair, you go to, 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 the, to the hospital to emergency room and you get fixed up. Um, with, with the eyes, it's more difficult, uh, especially in the visible um, range of light. Um, the, the top left image, um, there was a guy who had a setup at home, a one watt laser, a blue laser system, and it was standing on a chair. And he wanted, he, he did something. Um, I read the, the story was very vague, but he, he wanted to switch it off. So he got off his chair where he was sitting to, to tinker with the system. And uh, he, he stumbled upon a cable, and the whole laser setup from, from the other chair fell over. And somehow he got, a, he got the beam through his eye. This is one year after the accident. And, I mean, 
imagine you have this huge spot where you see nothing. I mean, the, 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 the brain can, can uh, adapt. Um, but, I mean, uh, such a black spot on one eye, um, you can't ignore this. You look someone in the face and you see black spot. You look on the traffic lights, you see black spot. Um, so this was a very, very bad mishap. On, on the right, the right image is um, less energy with a near infrared laser. Uh, this is a typical YAC laser, uh, 1064 nanometers. Um, that's a wavelength I work with at work. Um, that was a, a short, short pulse. And this is something you might recover from. Not that the, the retina recovers, but that your brain adapts to, oh, I, I, yeah, take away this, I, I ignore this spot, I interpolate the image. Um, I did the laser talk in, in autumn in, in Darmstadt at the MRMCD. And uh, I haven't had the, the, uh, the CO2 laser at that time. I just had my laser from work. So I did the same experiment. I, took, I got from a butcher this piece of, of pig skin, um, placed in the, in the focus area, and said, OK, 20 watt, full throttle. Let's see what happens. And after one minute of marking a rectangle on the skin, I saw nothing. Well, I mean, I put my power meter, so 20 watts, so everything was right. Then I took my, my thermal imaging camera, and so, whoa, this is getting hot. Um, the, the left, you see on the, on the left image, um, the, the range goes to 57 degrees. Um, you don't see anything, but it goes into the tissue and heats up from the inside. This must be very painful. I don't want to, to do it. I'm, sometimes I'm tempted to go through the beam, but I'm, I'm not going to do it, just to, to see the to have the sensation. Um, on the right-hand side, on the, on the bottom, the, this big red, this glowing blob was two, three minutes after marking this, what you see on the left-hand side. And uh, maybe you can read it, what I've, what I've written below. Um, this is Hallo Welt, Hallo World. Um, <laughs> you see nothing on the skin, but you can see it in the, in the thermal image. Um, I find this very impressive and shows even with lower, uh, with lower uh, energy, you can do a lot of damage. And this gives, uh, at that um, wavelength, this gives um, a lot of damage inside the tissue. Imagine you have, uh, you have your magnifier glass in, in summer and you, you, you have the sun in the focus and you have your skin, this, this starts burning and this is only minimum li um, power. You have whatever, how big the magnifier is. I don't know, give it a shot. <laughs> it's, it's very easy, it's very easy. You, you, take, you, you take a pot, Pour in some water, put it on the on the oven, on the on the cook, on the cooker, heat it up, and hold it in your hand and then a thermometer, and see when when the pain starts to become unbearable. So um, 60 degrees. Something. So the question was uh, at which temperature? I think. Yeah. Anyway, so this is painful. I don't want to do it. Um, I want to show you no. Hmm. Um, I talked about the, the danger of the optical radiation. We have, an, we have two, more, two more dangerous uh, sources of danger. One is when you handle a gas laser, like a CO2 tube, or different, different gas mixtures, you need to have a high voltage. The, the laser at the lab um, wants to have uh, 3,000 volts, and uh, we give them 30 milliamps. This is deadly. Simple, this is deadly. You touch it, you die, mostly. The other thing is um, what happens when you apply a lot of energy, thermal energy, onto whatever material. It evaporates, and um, sometimes um, the, the molecules 
the, the bonding of the molecules break, and you, then you have quite some funny things. Um, I made a video with, the, with my laser at work. Um, this is 1,064 nanometers on a special cardboard which is painted with a lac to, to see if the geometry is right, if the pulses are right, and so on. But what you see as well, I switched off the, the fume extraction system, which you can see at the right-hand side, the hose. Um, the smoke that's coming up, this smells bad. And uh, when you do, let's say, five to ten markings on, on this cardboard, you feel a bad feeling in your, in your, in your tummy. Um, now, imagine you have some other materials. You have plastics, which is a mixture of different, different elements and molecules, and they break up, and suddenly you have some, some delicious things like... Um, Cyanide, furans, dioxine, um, chlorine, formaldehyde. Not for me, so I don't want to smell this. I don't want to have this in my system. As well, when you do, do metal marking, you need to have a fume extraction. Uh, when when you, you mark on, on, on stainless steel, for example, so it's not just iron, it's, it's other metals as well, and it's an alloy of, of different metals. So it splits into the elements like nickel, chromium, mangan, cobalt, niobium, beryllium, lead, and so. And when you take ceramics, you have the same yummy, delicious content. Um, so a fume extraction system is very, very important, very vital. If you do something in the, in the region of material marking when you want to change a material. So if you just have a laser pointer and you chase your cat, so this, this doesn't apply. This is only if you do something with the material. Um, so there's mentioned a standard, EN 1150, 11.5.3. This is, I will come to standards later. Uh, this is a first introduction in, into the standards. Um, a lot of things around lasers are standardized. Um, wavelength to, uh, to, to energy and which class it gives and so on. How thick uh, a protective material has to be, how the, 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 the glass have to be, to be made of, which answer quite a lot. Um, I will come to this later. Um, I'm going to talk to, about laser classes now. Should. No, not yet. Some funny things you shouldn't do. On the top left side, uh, top left image, this was last year on, in the Hack Center. I want to apologize to the, to the Shack space, to the Stuttgart hackers, because we projected some, some images at the wall above them, and uh, I was a bit, whoa, is it okay? Is it okay? Okay. Um, so I'm sorry for that. Um, what you see is a 400, 400 milliwatt blue laser uh, standing on the on an empty CD, DVD box um, on a on a bistro table, which was standing on the normal table, so it was about this high. And then we had a power supply, and then we had a galv galvanometer control, and um, so we could deflect the beam. Um, so if someone pushes it just a bit and everything gets misaligned so, and someone walks by or doesn't realize it has a blue laser in his eyes. So remember the first, first images of the eyes and gives a nice black spot. Um, the image below I found in a book playing with lasers. I was in the library and, and collecting my, my materials and I came across this image. I said, no way. <laughs> The subtitle was, um, please don't look onto reflecting materials. <laughs> In a book, you could buy officially for the youth to tinker with lasers. I mean, this is one of the most stupid ideas, and I will tell you later why this is one of the most stupid ideas. It has to do with laser classes. Um, and what you see on, on the other side, on the right-hand side, um, I want to go to vacations. Mm. Excuse me. 
I wanted to go to vacations and I had quite a lot of work to do um, programming FPGAs on my laser system. So this is the internal of my laser system and this is at home. Um, because I'm a profane, uh, prof professional trained laser person, um, I thought, well, I have my safety goggles. I chased the cat away, closed the, the window blinds, and I did my programming work. And every now and then I had to switch on the laser and, and to see if everything goes well. Um, so the, the laser head, this is a gray box on, on top. Um, there, the, the laser beam goes in, there are two galvanometers with mirrors, and then it goes through a lens onto the material where, where, things, where the magic happens. And uh, this, this brown thingy is a loudspeaker. Mm. And what's round it round is a fiber reinforced tape. Um, <laughs> on, the, on the right hand side you see an oscilloscope. I don't say which brand, but it's crap. Um, <laughs> No, it makes no fun. Um, and uh, what you see in front is uh, the, the big box there. There happens magic, electricity in, light out, and the rest is controlled electronics. So I had to, to do some work at home. And um, if you don't know what you're doing, so don't do it, please. If you know exactly what you do, maybe you can do it. Um, talk to other guys and, and maybe you better stay alone in that room, um, not to, to harm anyone else. Um, right, laser classes. Um, basically, there are less laser classes which are interesting for you. We have the laser classes you can see, but for you, as hackers, I think there are two, three laser classes interesting. One is laser class one. Um, I don't know what the old school audio CD players have as, as a class, but laser class one is you take your laser pointer and stare into it. And when you're bored after half an hour, you switch it off and nothing happens. This laser class one is interesting for, for high powered lasers as well. I come to it later. Um, class two is what you have what you see here, um, what you the, the laser you chase your cat. Um, it's com it comes with something that we call the eyelid reflex, eyelid closing reflex. So the theory is that when you get hit by this class two laser beam, your eye will close fast enough to avoid any damage. And that's a weak point of this theory. There was a big uh, examination, um, a big test that had 1,700 people. And um, they were sitting on, on a chair and, and monitored, the, the face was monitored with a high-speed camera. And there was a line, a laser line, and coming down. And they measured the time between laser hitting the eye, coming onto the retina, so you could see the laser beam, and to you look away, you close your eyes, whatsoever, and only 20% of, of, of the people close their eyes within these 250 milliseconds, which the, the, eye, the, the closing reflex talks about. So 80% don't be, are not in time. So there were people even who, who needed one second to realize, oh, laser beam uh, closing eye or looking away. Um, and in that time, there can be some damage. So even this crap here, um, this pointer, um, is not safe for the eye, even if you can buy it everywhere in a Photoshop or at a supermarket whatsoever. Um, be careful. Um, then we have um, class three. So there is a difference, the, the classes one and two, they have the M as well. And one is you can stare into it with a magnifier glass and everything's safe. And the other one is you can't use any optical instruments to be safe in that class. Um, 
Class C is, um, yeah, it's a bit less dangerous than class four. It is, they, they, they talk about um, five times more energetic than, than class two. What's really funny is class four. Everything up from 500 milliamps to megawatt, gigawatt. So this is, you, this is a class you, you shouldn't have open like I did on my desk. Um, but you can make it safe. You can have this gigantic hellfire which you have in a fusion reactor as a class one laser. You just encapsulate it, that, make sure that no laser beam goes out. Then you have a laser class one system. So, um, the classes as well, uh, this is according to the wavelength. Um, there we have the vision, the, the visible system, uh, the visible wavelength, um, and you can see it goes up on the right-hand side, uh, where you can see that you have a higher region which is safe within this laser class. This is region of the iSafe region, which is about uh, 1,800 1, nanometers, something, I, I forgot the number now. Um, we have also different, uh, different uh, damages on the skin in the eye, according to the wavelength. UV, you know, you, you, you are in the sun for too long, or you, you, you like your, your tanning studio too much, you get burns on your, on your skin, and when you have a UV lamp, you have your glasses, your goggles. Um, so you have different types of chemic, photochemical reactions of, reactions of the skin, um, especially with the eyes. Uh, the, the UV, you have a damage of the cornea, and the, the, the longer the wavelength than you have in, in UV, you have the damage of the lens. Um, and then you have a damage of the retina. And the, the longer the wavelength goes, it goes back to, to, to damaging the cornea. So when the cornea is damaged, it's stupid, it's bad, but you can you might fix, might be able to fix it, or doctor might be able, or you can have a new lens, but this is nothing you want to have, seriously. Um, so, standards are very important. You can do, at home, you can do whatever you want. Buy your 50 watts, 100 watts CO2 tube at the Chinese web shop, they are cheap. You lock your doors, you do, you do what you want, if no one else is in the room. As soon as other people are involved, you should read the, the standards, which say, for example, the, the, the EN 68125, uh, uh, number one, part one, has the, the safety things about, uh, about a laser system. Um, you have to have a proper housing, you have to, to, to monitor any, any openings, and when, when you open something, the beam has to be interrupted, and so, and you need to have, up from class, laser class three, you need to have a key switch for access control, or magnetic card, or whatsoever, RFID system. In the lab, we want to, to set up an RFID system for the dangerous machines. Um, so this would, would um, satisfy this, this standard. Um, I could talk one week about these standards. They're very complex. They're very worth to read. You can, you can read them. You can't, as far as I know, you can't copy them at the, the universities which have a technical department. So you go there, you, you ask for the standards, you ask in Germany, you ask for DIN, EN, whatsoever. In the, the British, you ask for BS, EN, whatsoever and uh, you can read them. And, um, well, um, makes, no, makes no sense to go through the, the standards. Um, we can talk about it later on the Hack Center, if you like. Um, if you design a laser system, there are some things you should, you should look at. Um, you should monitor every opening, every door, uh, you should have an emergency system. It is a must-have, seriously. And you need to decide if you 
want to have an emergency shutoff or emergency stop. There are different ideas behind. Um, you need to have a shutter, which interrupts a beam. You need to have some access control. You need, very important, as we saw before, you need to have a fume extraction system. You don't want to have in your space all the, the chromium and burned wood smell. I mean, if we, before we had a, a filter system in the lab, when we cut uh, wood, you could smell it hundreds of meters away, half a kilometer you could smell. Oh, in the lab they are burning wood. Um, you need to do a risk analysis. What happens if something goes wrong? What happens if the, the laser source doesn't respond on, please shut off? Um, and this and that. It's, it's a long process of thinking. Um, it has to be taken seriously. There's literature, you should take it seriously. Um, you should document your, your project. And unfortunately, there is someone who has to sign for what you do, who's reliable, uh, liable for this. Um, finally, who can operate? I think on hackerspaces, who's allowed to operate the laser. So, we will have a few short minutes. Um, you will find me, if you want to have some, some, if you have some questions, if it can help you with your laser design, um, I'm here, I'm at the Hack Center, um, at uh, the, the file overflow, it's, you come in the Hack Center very far at the, right furthermost corner. Um, if you have questions, then you, we can discuss your, your issues with lasers. No problem, I'm delighted to do so. Otherwise, please wear safety goggles. And um, if you have any questions, we have how many minutes? We are done. I'm sorry, Hack Center. Thank you very much.